talking about the things that matter most to you, Catholic Women Now. Good morning. Welcome to Catholic Women Now with Chris Magruder and my guest co-host this morning, my sister, Jenny Nielsen. Welcome, Jenny. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So we are sitting at the coffee table with our red and white checkered coffee table cloth here, and we're just enjoying a little conversation before the show starts. It's so fun because we are excited to have really amazing guests in studio today. They are amazing. I'm looking at them right now. That's right. (laughs) Yep. The co-founders, actually, co-directors. Tim Jamison and Grayson Dahl of Prairie Fire Ministries are going to be with us this morning. And they are going to talk to us about how Prairie Fire Ministries is the full proclamation of the gospel, what that means. But before we do that, Jenny, let's talk a little bit about something Julie and I always start our show out with. What's that? Truth, beauty, and goodness segment. Oh, God. Have you seen any truth, beauty, and goodness well, you around you mentioned this to me before, and I totally <laughs> forgot you were going to ask. Well, and so truth, beauty, and goodness. Do you want to start? I'll, I'll tell you what. What has just been hitting me <laughs> over the head lately is the Christian community around us. How there is always somebody there when you need them, whether it's for a laugh, for me at least, whether it's for a hug, whether it's you know you need to be there for them. But how our Christian community in Des Moines, Iowa, has become such a a nutrition for my soul. It's mm. just been amazing how it's been feeding me, of course, with the gospel and with the Eucharist too. But oh my goodness, everywhere I go, every uh, everywhere I turn lately, it's been just beautiful how Lord has shown up through people. Oh, yeah. Well, the people I'm thinking of are our daughter is a kindergarten teacher here in the Des Moines Diocese, and the kindergartners. I get to hear stories about them from her, <laughs> and they are hilarious. Yes. And recently, Dan took the dog for a walk, and he said the kindergartners at the school near our house kind of attacked him. And he said, oh, the beauty of these little kids. Uh-huh. So just taking in the little yes. people. So yes. Much fun. Yeah, they're little lights. <laughs> we saw those at Holy Communion this weekend, too, the light of seeing all those little brides and grooms coming oh, up to Jesus to receive communion. So beautiful in those little so, dresses and suits. Yes. Oh, so, so beautiful. So beautiful. Well, hey, you want to get us started with prayer sure. today? Yep. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Well, listeners, I should have let you know this. My friend and co-host, Julie Nelson, is taking a little break right now so she can go to the East Coast and be grandma. Mm. So that's why you will be uh, hearing from other fun co-hosts like my sister. Leslie Teeling will be in later this month, too. So we're going to have a little extra color coordinating this this month. It'll be fun. But I want to introduce to all of you my friend Tim Jamison and my friend Grace and Dahl, the co-founders, co-directors of Prairie Fire Ministries. Welcome, men. Good morning. Yeah, thanks, Chris. So fun to have you guys in studio yeah, with us. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. So Prairie Fire Ministries, you define it as the full proclamation of the gospel. What's that mean? Yeah. So when, if we look at the gospels, what Jesus goes about doing, right? He goes into their towns, he goes into their villages and he proclaims the word, right? Mm -hmm. He is the incarnate word Mm -hmm. and he proclaims the word, but also too, he never, it was never just word. It was always word and deed. And so whenever he would proclaim the message, usually uh, a sign or a wonder or a miracle would actually follow up the message to affirm what he just proclaimed, right? So he, if you look in, um, if you, yeah, if you look at Luke 418, um, that's Jesus's mission statement. Right. He come to the spirit of the Lord is upon me or he quotes the scroll from Isaiah. And and what he proclaims is this message of liberation, of freedom, of 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 glory, of the kingdom of God being at hand. And so when you proclaim the kingdom of God being at hand, well, you see the effects of the kingdom being made manifest in front of you. What are the effects of the kingdom? Healing, deliverance, freedom, repentance, right? Communities gathering together in one Yes. Um, so that's like, that's the fullness of the gospel proclamation. Yes. And not just physical healing, spiritual yeah. healing, Spiritual-ness, relational yeah. healing is kind mm-hmm. of a little bit mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. what Prairie, Minis- for Prairie Fire Ministries has done to this point too. Yeah. Really, yeah. it's actually spiritual first, emotional second, mm. physical third, mm. and then if necessary, deliverance. Mm. Amen. Wow. Well, okay. So... Let's just kind of get everybody to understand what is your role, you two? What do you two do in Prairie Fire Ministries? 
Sure. We, um, we're we co-directors, and uh, this started roughly about a year and a half ago, about 18, 20 months ago. Um, the first healing service at the cathedral was in November uh, a year, well, two years ago, actually now. And um, we come together, and we pray, and we've talked to many people. And we were doing this before the actual start of Pray Fire Ministries, and it got to the point where it was too much. We just couldn't do it um, one one face to face anymore because there was just too many people, and the t- the time was just incredible. So, Grace and I prayed. We went to the bishop. We asked the bishop if he would consider helping, mm-hmm. and uh, he said, "Give me some time." He came back and he said, "Move forward mm-hmm. with my blessing," but um, I want it. The one stipulation he said, "I do want it at the cathedral downtown in the center of the diocese." Because this is not just for Des Moines, it's for my whole diocese, every parish. And it's not just for Catholics. No, it's no. not. No, we are seeing, um, I would say, would, would you say, Tim, probably one-sixth of the, congreg- yeah. of the congregation yeah. at the healing service, at the monthly healing service, is, is Protestant. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are Protestants being healed in front of the Eucharist mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have testimonies coming in of Protestants, Lutherans, non-denominational Baptists. Yeah. That are being healed in front of Jesus. I mean, talk about Eucharistic, Eucharistic revival, right? Right. Like the Protestants are seeing the power of the Eucharist right in front of them. The Catholics are also too seeing the power of the Eucharist because Jesus is exposed mm. when we pray for healing. Mm. And Tim Jameson and Grace Indall do not do any of the healing. It is it is it is Jesus, and and we make that very we try to make that very apparent that that Jesus is the one that is the healer, right? He he is the only one that can heal. He is the only one that can forgive sins, right? And so we make that very apparent. And that's why we wanted a Eucharistic um, healing service. So, friends, what he means by that, and maybe you said this, but I just want to be clear: the Eucharist is exposed in this in these yeah. times when yeah. when we come it's together so to pray, because it is Jesus it who's is. doing the healing. Mm-hmm. And I, I love how you guys we praise first, and then there's a testimony, and then Jesus the King comes out. You know exactly. what I mean? And so nothing is, nobody's even prayed over until Jesus is there mm-hmm. well, being he, exposed. He is the physician, right? Yes. I mean, he, he's the one that we're waiting for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Well, you're listening to Iowa Catholic Radio Network, and this is Chris Magruder alongside my guest co-host, Jenny Nielsen. We are so glad to have you, Jenny, even though you're quieter today. <laughs> I'm a little quiet today. <laughs> but we are. I'm so glad to have you beside me. It's fun to have my sister in studio with me. So listeners, we will be back in a moment and we will hear more all about all this exciting stuff that's happening in Des Moines, Iowa with Prairie Fire Ministries. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Mercy College of Health Sciences, where you can chart your course for more. Mercy College provides unparalleled clinical rotations, hands-on learning, accelerated education, and flexible schedules. Since 1899, Mercy College has been transforming students into healthcare professionals. Guided by Catholic values, our faculty put classroom theory into practice. Students are prepared for roles in service and leadership throughout their own careers. Learn more at mchs.edu. Mercy College of Health Sciences. MCHS. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from the St. Thomas More Center in Panora, Iowa, home of Catholic Youth Camp, where life-changing peace meets transforming joy. By uniting our Catholic faith and fun, CYC serves youth and young adults as they become joy-filled missionary disciples of Christ. Campers experience laughter, new friends, and writing new stories as they are immersed in the beauty of the Catholic faith and live the adventure of His call. Registration for summer camps is now open. For more information, visit stmcenter.com. Welcome back to Catholic Women Now. You're listening to Chris Magruder and guest host Jenny Nielsen. We are excited to have in studio today Tim Jamison and Grace and Dahl talking to us about Prairie Fire Ministries. Hey, I have a question for you, you guys. Yeah, what is it? What is the goal of Prairie Fire Ministries? Yeah. Well, that, that's, that's a good question. Um, so if you look around today in the church right now, it's not, right, it's pretty apparent that, that there's a lot of broken hearts in the church right now. That, that 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 the bride's heart, the church's heart is is aching, right? Mm-hmm. It's 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 bleeding. It's she's crying out, and she's crying out for healing. She's crying out for restoration. She's crying out for renewal and revival. And the end goal of this ministry is to answer the cry of the bride, right? We are just tending to the bride's heart, meaning the church's heart, and we are the church, right? Everybody, the mystical body of Christ, we are the church. We are the walking church here on earth. And so many of the church, so many people in the church right now 
I mean, they're so broken. And we get to see it on, on a monthly basis and also to individually when they, when they come to us. And God is pouring out his healing and he is showing the strength of his arm and he is showing that he is Lord over every single situation in the world that we have going on right now. Every, every, every case of addiction, he's, he's Lord over it, right? Every case of cancer, he's, he's Lord over it, right? Mm-hmm. And he is Lord over death. Mm-hmm. He's Lord over all of the political stuff that's going on right now. Yeah. He is Lord and he rose from the dead. Yeah. And, he, and, and friends, he's saying this all with a smile. I know. Yeah. It's the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, glory right. to God, right? Like, yes. praise God. Yes, yes. It's yeah. so awesome. Yeah. So what kinds of things have you guys seen through Prairie Fire Ministries to this point? Tim? Sure. There's Obviously, there's been so many healings that we don't obviously keep track, but there's so many emotional healings and physical healings, spiritual healings, you know, and the ones that we see are the physical, right? If somebody comes in with cancer, and they go back and they get tested and the cancer is gone. Or if they have a broken leg or if they have a knee that doesn't work or a rotator cuff, um, those we actually get to see. The ones we don't see and are sometimes the most important, and that is the spiritual healing. Because without the spiritual healing, there is no healing. That is it. That's everything. And the Lord reminds us over and over, you know, don't keep your eyes on the physical. Keep your eyes on those hearts that need to be healed. And that's the the main, really, to be honest with you, the main focus is to proclaim the gospel and to heal souls. And how Mm -hmm. how do you know that that's happened when it's not physical? Sure. How we get the response is by word of mouth. So we receive lots of different um, testimonies from either written or texts or emails or to our website. And and then also um, many just come and actually tell us. I mean, from that last healing service, the healing service before, people just come up and Grayson, why don't you explain what happened with that lady that came up to you? I was, that's so funny you said that. I was just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say. So you'll have. I mean, we get people just sending letters in, um, telling us of their of their healings. And this lady walked up to me at the last healing service, and and I can't remember what was healed. I think it was her back, and she had horrible, horrible back pain. Um, and she kind of comes up to on the altar. She finds me. She gives me the letter. Open it up, and she's like. I was fully healed at the last healing service or no, it was the October healing service. And, and I looked at it, read it and she had this like chronic back pain that, that she went to, I think different physicians. And she uh, reminds me of the hemorrhaging woman, like suffering under many physicians and they couldn't figure it out. And then she was, she was completely healed, like no more pain. Um, after, after she left the healing service. And so you received that letter and, and Tim and I were like, we're just laughing. Like it is so beautiful. And we, we, the prayer that we pray is Lord, never let this get old. Mm-hmm. Lord, Amen. Let us, because, because a lot of people, what, what they, you know, if you look in acts three, when, when the lame man is raised off of the, off of the ground, what does he do? He doesn't just walk into the temple and like, uh, he, he's, he's not, he's jumping. He, he, he was leaping. <laughs> Yeah, literally. He was jumping yeah. in a place where you don't jump, right? <laughs> he, he was dancing. Can you imagine somebody dancing in a you know in the church like they're healed? That's what they did. It was scandalous. Yeah. It was yes. it was a contradictory. Yes, and um, it would be scandalous today if we all started jumping oh in the church. Oh my gosh! Unless you're in Africa, but where that, they do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah but that man was laying there for for I mean years. I mean decades, right? And and he and he goes and so that's what like we want to have that reaction every time. Yes, that mm-hmm. this doesn't get old. Like God's glory being revealed to His people doesn't get old. Yes, I love that. The wonder and awe cannot leave us. Yeah. We have yes. to retain. We it. have to be little yes. little children. Yes, little children. You know what? Um, at the last praying service, I was just supposed to be in the pew praying for people, and I got asked to pray with some people. And there was another lady who I said, "Can you pray with me?" Because we pray in twos, and she said, "I am. I am not." I am not prepared to do that. And I said, can you say a Hail Mary? <laughs> and she said, yes. And I said, okay. Yeah. And then she sat down and at the end she shared something where the Lord had actually shown her that she was going to be doing that that night. Wow. And so yes. the things that happened to us even, right. they're praying, the Lord's instilling joy in mm-hmm. us too. Mm-hmm. So there's such mm-hmm. joy mm-hmm. when God calls mm-hmm. you to pray. But we have, we have to be open to the call. We have yes. to listen yes. and we have to respond because he is calling and he's calling everyone. Mm. This is a time in the world that right. we've never seen before. Right. He's reaching out to many, many souls. Well, what have you guys seen, if anything? I'm probably at this point, you're going to say nothing, but what has seen that has surprised you? And Jenny, I know you're part of Prairie Fire Ministries I too. Am. So yep. any of you guys answer this question, what have you seen that has surprised you? And I'll tell you, we've got about two minutes, Then we can come back to this too if we have more to talk about on this one. You know, I think the 
the thing that jumps to my mind right now in the beginning, two years ago, there was, it was primarily healing. It was truly primarily healing. And once in a while there would be a deliverance. And today we find ourselves actually in just the last two years, a huge difference in our world. And there's more and more demonic oppression, more demonic activity. Um, and more and more people are being tormented. And so we're seeing a lot more of that end of the work. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's it's kind of strange to say this, but we're starting to get just comfortable with it now because there's been so much of it mm-hmm. recently. Mm-hmm. So just to be clear, we're not doing exorcisms. That's left no, for a priest. Absolutely. No, that's the liturgical rite, um, only able to be said by the priest. Right. But these, what it is, people hear deliverance, they're like, oh, like the demonics manifest. Yeah, and it all makes them things, scared blah, blah, blah. too. But yeah, and and w- what it is, it's, it's deliverance is 75% of deliverance ministry it's just bringing things into the light. Mm-hmm. We live in a culture of darkness mm-hmm. where we are so afraid of, of sharing the things that we're so shameful of, the yeah. things that have happened to us, the traumas, the abuse, the, the addictions that we're struggling with, because we think that it is going to disqualify us from love. Mm-hmm. And that's the lie of the enemy. Mm-hmm. And so 75% of deliverance ministry is just bringing things into the light mm-hmm. because the enemy can only operate in the, in, in, in the dark. And when you bring things into the light, it completely expels the the assignment of the enemy and and it, it makes him sterile he can't move mm-hmm. um which is so beautiful and that's why the, the sacrament of reconciliation is so important um and deliverance ministry is not a freedom from it's a freedom for for god for god yeah. to run after god yes. with because can you imagine running a race with chains just you know wrapped around your around your shoulders and weights being drug on your feet God wants to free his people to run after him. It reminds me of that song. Oh, it's the song. And it talks about how God will chase us down to save us. He'll kick the walls down. What is that song? You guys know what I'm talking about? Kick the walls down. But ah, we're bumping up against the clock. Um, This is Iowa Catholic Radio Network. And you're listening to Catholic Women Now with Chris Magruder and guest host Jenny Nielsen. We are going to come back. And we have a lot more to talk about with Tim Jamison and Grayson Dahl, all about Prairie Fire Ministries. Stay tuned. It's amazing how uplifting God's Word is. He reveals that life has a purpose, that our sufferings don't come to stay, they come to pass, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, that His love defines us, not our flaws. St. Paul had an amazing attitude in prison. Want to know why? Because he preached those truths to himself all the time. And whenever self-defeating negative thoughts popped up, he'd choose to dwell on the Word of God instead. Listen, not every one of your thoughts gets to vote. Not every one of them matters. Not every one of them is valid, but God's word always is. And he didn't reveal his word to you so you'd wait for someone else to preach to you in hard times. He revealed his word to you so you start preaching to yourself. You know whose job it is to remind you of the truth? Yours. If you're always looking to everyone else to do that job for you, you're going through life way too needy. Preach the truth to yourself. This is Chris Stefanik from reallifecatholic.com. Welcome back to Catholic Women Now. You're listening to Chris Magruder and guest host Jenny Nielsen, my sister. Hello. <laughs> so fun to have you in here, Jenny. It's I love fun it. to be here. Yeah. Thanks and for having me. Friends, you don't know this, but uh, she's she's had a guest host in Grayson, so it's been fun for her to get to know Grayson even better. Oh, and, we've had a blast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We've, we've had quite a big talk. A lot of, lot of big talk. Yeah. No Jenny, more little talk at our house. Yeah. Just yeah. big yeah. talk. That's right. What we always say. That's right. So it's Ever fun to have you guys both in studio <laughs> together. So well, okay. Um, tell us, you guys, Prairie Fire Ministries, why should we trust you? Why should we trust Prairie Fire Ministries? Um, yeah, just why? Sure. Um, about five months ago, we were contacted and the bishop asked if Grayson and I would sit down um, with the exorcist here in the Des Moines Diocese and himself and another man, um, Adam Story, and work on something called Ecclesiastical Norms for healing services. And that's a document um, that needed to be put into action. And so um, obviously Grace and I are not used to writing ecclesiastical norms. No, so, <laughs> not at all. You know, so we put um, in our comments, we, we added things, we read through things, we, we um, debated a little bit, went back and forth with the bishop. And the bishop was so incredible, supportive, and, and just absolutely wonderful. I mean, he's just been um, honestly, I can't say enough. He has truly been there and is there today. And um, the norms are just a, a 
policy or procedure protocol in the Catholic Church that tells us what we can and cannot do inside the the actual healing service itself. Mm -hmm. And we need these norms to keep us, literally guardrails is what they are, Mm -hmm. um, so that we're doing what the Catholic Church allows, teaches, and observes. Mm -hmm. And um, so that we just actually finished it uh, about a week ago, correct? They were released, I think, about, I think, was it a week ago? Yeah. But they were finished probably about a month ago. Right. So they're now out. Actually, you can go to the Des Moines Diocese webpage, and they're actually listed on the website. So Mm -hmm. if you want to look at them, they are out there. Yeah. I will tell you that I can't remember if it's 48 or 58 pages, but it's long. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah. So and it, you and, guys wrote and, all and of we that? Didn't, no, we no. didn't write okay. all of that. No. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, like, I don't know where you find the time. The diocese is really good at writing. They're yeah. really good at writing those papers. Yeah. Adam's story is incredible. Let me just say yeah, that. The, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Incredible. Absolutely Kudos incredible. Adam. And then the, the exorcist of the diocese, he did such a good job. Dave Fleming. Yeah. yeah. Father Dave Fleming, Dave. he did such a good job. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think on the topic of like why should you trust us? It's I think um, what Jesus said to his disciples: um, "Come and see." Just cu- he said, "Come and see." Make a judgment for yourself. Mm-hmm. What is yeah? Is is there truth here? Yeah. Right, because a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. A good true or, or a good tree cannot produce bad fruit. And so I think you know if you if you do have a little like we're like by nature we're humans. I'm probably one of the most skeptical p- skeptical people in the world. It's like mm-hmm. we are by nature, we are skeptical. And um, so what I, I just encourage you, this, you know, the skeptic out there, um, don't worry, you're, 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 you're normal, right? Mm-hmm. The supernatural is skeptical. Like it's, it's skeptical. And it's good for to, us to test. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Test all yeah. things scripture says, That's right? Yes. Test yeah. every spirit. Yes. And so just come down and make a judgment, uh-huh. right? Yeah. Um, come down to the healing service, come yeah. down and, and encounter our Lord there. Yeah. Um, and if he's there, make your, ju- like make your judgment. Yeah. Um, what I love is that Prairie Fires gives training. The bishop wants us all to be trained, so he gives us training. So one of the things that we are trained to do when we finish praying with somebody is, Lord, if we have prayed anything or said anything that's not of you, let it be forgotten. Yeah. And in Jesus' name, we trust his grace to that. And if anything that we, you know, all the things that we prayed that are of you, let that remain. I mean, that's one of the Mm -hmm. things that we learn to do. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. it's God. It's all God. We, Mm -hmm. he said, you will do all these things in greater I'm like, whoa, he wants to work with us. He wants to use our hands. Powerful. Yeah. Yay. Okay. So, okay. Thank you, Lord. Well, how Thanks about today's gospel? I mean, literally today's gospel. Yeah. Read it. It literally says, you will do all of these things. Mm-hmm. You will cast out demons. You will heal. By my name, you will do all that I have done and much more when I send the paraclete, mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit to you. Yes. So he literally stated it and not once or twice, but multiple times in the New Testament. Mm-hmm. So Grayson, you invited everybody to the healing service to come check it out, but Maybe we need to mention when that is. That's a yeah, good, good idea. Jenny Nielsen, you are incredible. We love I'm that. I'm kind yes, of an organizer. I love that. Um, that is not my idea. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, so the next healing service is going to be, is it May? It's a third. It's always the third Wednesday yeah, of well, every month at 530 to 930. Yeah. Um, and I, honestly, I don't remember the date. Yeah, I, I can't remember the third Wednesday in May. Um, it, it's it's up on the website. So if you go to www.prayfireministries.com, um, it'll be up on the website. And also, too, uh, we'll be posting something on our Facebook page here as well to just remind everybody. And every third Wednesday, friends, because I will tell you, even during spring break, yeah. <laughs> and people come from this last one, I think there were eight hours away. Yeah. People were coming from Drove far from away. Hours away. So, yes. Yeah. And, and it's they're... amazing how mm-hmm. they come, literally from all over. Mm-hmm. You don't need to advertise. Um, no. The Holy Spirit's the best advertiser. For oh, sure. And, yes. and absolutely amazing. So, um, and then also just, we do have about two and a half minutes. How do people get involved if they are feeling led? Because we need more people. On our website, if you go to the website, there's a contact us part. Mm-hmm. And you click on it and you put in your name, address, phone number, email. And then we have people now that are are monitoring that and that you will be contacted. So if you want to play any part, and we have ushers and we have greeters and music ministry and we have prayer teams and we have lots of different areas. So um, all are welcome. And we would love to have anybody who feels the Holy Spirit urging them to step forward, mm. to come. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and if you're not sure, say, Lord, give me a little sign. Exactly. Somebody else will also invite you. You know, mm-hmm. I, 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 that just happened with me recently. So, you know, the Lord wants to work through us. I think that's what's so beautiful. And whether it's Prairie Fire Ministries or whatever, the Lord has a plan to work through your life too. So absolutely, a little thing like that. So, well, we are getting kind of down to the end here. So I'm going to close with a little prayer. And I just want to say, you guys, thank you so much for what you're doing. And thank you so much for your courage and for saying yes to Jesus, Mm -hmm. not once, 
but over and mm-hmm. over and over. And all of you who have been to Prairie Fire, those of you involved with Prairie Fire, we pray for you and we thank you for uh, for your part in it. So, um, yeah, let's do a closing prayer. Okay. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Good and gracious Father, you are so good. I love the way, Lord God, that you want to come in, that you chase us down to our dying day, that you kick those walls down. Sometimes you're kicking the walls down, Lord, and sometimes you're just gently loving us. But whatever you do, Lord God, you are good. And I thank you, Lord God, for your goodness. And I thank you, Lord God, for how you are working through so many ministries in the Des Moines area, and especially Prairie Fire Ministries. I thank you for Tim and for Grayson and all involved. I ask for your holy protection to be on them and to be on all of our listeners today, that the Holy Spirit might touch them, heal them, and help them in whatever way they need to be healed today through this conversation. I just give you praise and thanksgiving, Lord. In your name, Jesus, I pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. 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 Now go do impossible things with God. Today's Catholic Women, on The Voice for Catholic Women Now, Iowa Catholic Radio.